Welcome to Crimson Guitars. Welcome to my home studio. I'm Ben, and uh, this is a tiny, tiny video. Luthier's tips and tricks. This is a guitar that I'm in the process of slimming down and uh, upgrading for my daughter. And uh, of course, as is ever the case, there's an issue with the wiring. It's probably just a dry joint or something grounding out. But this is a Strat style instrument and I'd need to take the damn neck off in order to get underneath the scratch plate. And it is just so damned annoying. Today, I'm going to show you the second best use for a capo. After, of course, learning how to play properly. Let's go. Burn it. Perfect! <laughs> Now, the trick is I don't want to, uh, I don't want to run the risk of breaking these strings. I don't want to uh, uh, detune and retune and detune and retune, etc. So what I'm going to do is leave the strings roughly tuned up, whack a capo on, and then take the neck off as it is. Fingers crossed, it's going to make this whole thing a lot easier. Okay, so this is a Crimson, uh, uh, Crimson Guitars kit. It was an early prototype, hence the, the weight issues. It's under full tension. I've completely, I've taken all four of the bolts out. And uh, I've still, I can still actually play. Look, mum, no bolts. Anyway, okay, so at this point, neck comes off if the neck joint will let me. There's an issue doing things like this when you have everything absolutely perfectly fitted is sometimes an issue. So my, um, my scratch plate is also perfectly fitted. So uh, the neck is grabbing the scratch plate and pulling that up as I, as I go. But we're almost there. There we go. When I put this neck back in, it will be at the correct tension, the strings will be sorted, and it's all good. And now I can take this apart and uh, <laughs> figure out what I did wrong in the, on the, uh, uh, in the wiring. This was a tip that came in a comment underneath uh, the build video where I discovered that I'd made a mistake and I complained about having to you know, take the strings off and run the risk of breaking them and all that. And one of you fantastic people, it's flash the, uh, the actual comment up uh, on the screen if we can, it gave me this idea and it is, I love learning, I love improving what I do and I really appreciate your help and support in this. So yeah, if you've got any ideas, anything you'd like to see me try, give me a shout. Stream at crimsonguitars.com or just in the comments below. The wiring looks ostensibly okay. Now, I, I haven't uh, wired a ground to the shielding inside the cavity, which is actually, I've always thought it wasn't important, but uh, on talking to people who actually know what they're talking about, uh, it's actually important. In the comments in the build video, people were saying, oh, your carbon fiber isn't really gonna act as a shield. I don't think that's really the case. Check this out. So we can hear an earth buzz. And when I touch the bridge, we've got more of it. But also, when I touch the carbon fiber. So 
the carbon fiber itself is causing is causing issues. I've now got a ground going between. In fact, that's now stopping anything coming out. This is weird. Uh, I'm going to run a ground to the uh, uh, to the shielding paint from the scratch plate as well. Get that in there and just double check my joints and we'll see what happens. I'm going to leave the amp on so I can hear what's happening as I uh, as I go. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Okay. Had a break. Realized I was being a total and utter doofus. Fingers crossed. We appear. Ha ha! Okay. Uh ha. -huh. Yeah. None of that was necessary. None of that was necessary. The jack plug, most jack plugs have a very obvious earth. It's the central section and it, it goes in and it's all, that's the earth, that's fine. Uh, the one that happens to be in there, it's not the same. And I had the earth and the live swapped. There we go. Anyhow, let's put this guitar back together again. We have definitely also improved the uh, the shielding. It did need, uh, or at least the grounding. Uh, so what we've, it was good that we did this in any case. Remember that I changed out the slugs, uh, not the slugs, the, 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 the bolts, the screws <laughs> in the pickup. And I'm not entirely sure if they were stainless steel or, uh, or not. Probably not. So that is going to affect the sound. Once we've got the strings on, we're going to hear what she sounds like and then probably put the original screws back in. It's going to be interesting to see what happens there. For now, I'm hoping that this is going to be super easy. It was a really tight Metroid, wasn't it? <laughs> okay, fun. Of course, I really should just take the jack plug out, but that would just be too, too clever, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. There we go. Let's get these others, uh, other bolts in. I 
I wish I hadn't made such a silly schoolboy mistake with regards to the wiring, but the trick of using a capo to make it easier to change, to take the neck off and get access to the, uh, this underneath the scratch plate, the wiring, etc., that is a really cool thing. And we're still in tune. All right, fine, we're not still 100% in tune. So where's the G string? Feeling subdued. Stay right there. And we got the bits. Hex bolts are much easier to, to work with. much brighter it is. That's almost muffled. So there we go. QED. Uh, make absolutely certain and this is fairly basic and uh, I think we all realize this fairly soon. Um, you should probably use magnetic metal in order to create the magnetic field that reads the strings in your magnetic guitar. Why do we call them electric guitars when it's based on magnets? I need to, I need to go and do something else. I'm in a funny mood, please forgive me. The magnetosphere. Shut up, Ben. Oh my God. This is the screwdriver to use. So this is this is a, a quite an early pickup by Matt over at House of Tone, one of the unmitigated geniuses of pickup making. He knows more about pickup making than I know about guitar building, and it's just incredible. His yeah, check it out. We'll slick a li link in the description there. Um, I'm not sponsored by him in any way. We just I'm a I'm a fan of his work. But um, it's amazing the difference that uh, having the right uh, screws makes. Mm. 
I know this isn't the standard pickup for this kind of guitar, but eh, who cares? <laughs> then thank you for watching please click like and subscribe i'm so sorry i just clapped in your ear i'm really happy with how this beastie sounds uh i'm sure jasmine will be absolutely made up as well she's refused to show up on camera with us uh, i apologize for everybody who wanted to do that but uh that's that now listen to me i have yet got one final small little bit to do on this and that is the logo i have got a fender style logo but saying the name Jasmine, because that'll be cool. I'm gonna cut it out of uh, silver or aluminum or stainless steel, something like that. And uh, that is gonna be a standalone video coming soon. Let me know what you think of uh, the format of having shorter videos uh, interspersed. I'm not ever gonna stop doing full builds, but I think that having a, a short video or a short-ish video, <laughs> this is me we're talking about after all, uh, that is more to the point of saying, hey, check out this cool trick or check out this process or this cool tiny little screwdriver that I've put back or something like that. I can take the words goodbye and spit it out into five minutes of waffle about random stuff. Mainly old tools and guitars. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Goodbye. Burn it. Perfect! <laughs>